Hello and welcome to our March Messy Church, where we're celebrating Holy Week and Easter 2021. Now, you might like to get yourself comfortable before we say our special words that we always use to start Messy Church. Now, I will say the words that are in green and together we will all say the words in black. We meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Now we're doing our Bible stories a little bit different this month. Usually we just focus on one passage of the Bible and one story. But this week is a really important week to Christians. So we've got lots of Bible stories. Now, it takes me a long time to go through all of the stories that we've got and all of the passages. But you've got those in your bag if you'd like to read them. Now, it's actually Holy Week. So today is Saturday and tomorrow is the start of Holy Week. And it starts with Palm Sunday. Now, Palm Sunday is a day that we remember when jo when Jesus went into to Jerusalem. The crowds had heard that he was coming and they were so excited. They stood out on the streets and they had palm leaves and they were waving them and they were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And they were so excited. And Jesus had found a colt, a young donkey, and was riding that into Jerusalem. Now, the disciples didn't realise at the time but what had actually happened was after all the events of Easter happened, they realised that by Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a colt, that had been told many years before by the prophets. The scriptures actually said that the king would come riding a donkey's colt. Now, when they went into Jerusalem, it was a special time and it was a time for the festival of the unleavened bread, which is something that the Jews had been celebrating for many years to remember the Passover where God had saved them. Now Jesus sent two of his disciples on ahead of him to find a place for them to eat the special meal together. They were able to find a place just as Jesus had told them they would. And as they sat at the table, Jesus did something very special. Now, in your bags you've got a recipe for flatbreads and the reason we chose flat, flatbreads is because on the Passover which we call Maundy Thursday they ate bread that couldn't rise it was a bread that could be made very very quickly and could travel quite easily and that is something that Jesus would have eaten with his disciples now what Jesus did that was very funny or very strange was as he got the bread, he took it and he broke pieces off. And as he passed it out to his disciples, he said, take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way as he did that with the bread, he did the same with the wine. And as he poured the wine out and they shared the cup of wine, he said, this is my blood that is shed for you. And as they were sitting around the table, Jesus said something that caused the disciples to ask lots of questions. He said, among you is one who is going to betray me. Now, this started the disciples off chatting and they were all asking questions because they wanted to know which one it would be that would betray their teacher. The one that would betray him was Judas Iscariot. Now, on Good Friday, Jesus had been arrested and he'd been put before the Roman Emperor, Emperor Pontius Pilate. And Pontius Pilate had listened to what everyone had said and Jesus had been sentenced to die on a cross, a death of crucifixion. So Pontius Pilate sent him off with the soldiers and what they did next was they dressed him in purple robes. Now, the reason they chose purple 
is because purple is the colour of kings. They wasn't saying that Jesus was a king. They was doing this to mock him and to say, you thought you was a king? We're going to dress you in king's clothes. And then they made him a crown. But the crown was made of thorns and prickles. Think of those bramble bushes, like what blackberries come on. Like that, really, really hard. And they wove this crown and they put it on his head and they pushed it down so that it really hurt his head. And then, I'm sure you've seen lots of kings and they have a staff in their hand. They took a stick and they hit Jesus over the head with it and hurt him even more. And something that they did in the Roman times, they would kneel before a king and they would kiss a king. But what they did, they knelt before Jesus and they spat at him, they spat into his face. And once they'd finished doing all these things and mocking him, they took the purple robe off, they dressed him in his clothes and they led him away to be crucified. Now, Jesus had to carry his own cross, so it was a big wooden cross and he started to carry it. And he was finding that really, really difficult. So they pulled someone out of the crowds to help him to carry that cross. On Good Friday, as Jesus was hung on the cross, standing on the hill, really, really not a good place for him to be. At 12 o'clock, the land became dark. The sun disappeared as Jesus lay there waiting to die. And then at three o'clock, Jesus cried out, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit, calling to God. And with that, he took his last breath and he died. And as he died, the earth shook and there was a big curtain in the temple. Now this curtain was seen as a very, very holy place. On one side of it, everyone could go. But the other side, only the priests could go because that would be where they could go to meet with God. But at that moment when Jesus died, that curtain tore and it was ripped in two so that that place was open and there was no barrier between people and God anymore. And the land became light again. Now, the disciples were really sad and someone took Jesus' body off and laid it in a grave in a tomb. Then on Good Sunday, which was three days later, early in the morning while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. Now, tombs then would have been big caves. They didn't have doors, so the only thing they had to keep whatever was in the tomb inside and to stop people going in and taking anything that had been laid in the tomb with the person who had died was massive great big boulders Now this is teeny weeny the boulder that we're thinking of would have been even bigger than me it probably would have taken a few adults to move it it would have been absolutely huge there was no way that could be moved on its own when Mary Magdalene got to the tomb she got there and the stone had been rolled away it was no longer blocking the entrance and as she began to cry she knelt down and looked into the tomb and she could see two angels dressed in white standing next to the clothes that Jesus had been laid in. And they said to her, Woman, why are you crying? And she said, My Lord is gone. And as she turned around, she saw Jesus standing behind her. But she did not realise it was Jesus. And he said, Woman, why are you crying? And she said, If you've taken my Lord away, tell me where you've taken him and I will go and get him. And Jesus said, Mary. And at once she recognised him and she became happy and she shouted out, Rabboni, which means teacher. And she went away and she told all of the disciples, Jesus is alive! Jesus is alive and that is the amazing thing about Easter. Now some of you may have eggs at Easter and one of the reasons we have eggs is because eggs represent new life that's where chicks come from 
baby birds or if it's reptiles baby lizards all different things that's new life so Easter is a time where we remember that Jesus died on the cross on Good Friday and three days later just as had been written all those years ago he rose again to life and he died for us because he loves us. Hi and welcome to our messy Easter at home. This time we've got um, four uh, Easter activities lined up for you to go along for you to do in the whole of the week before Easter, which uh, as Christians we would call uh, Holy Week. The first activity is a search for Easter story. It's a combination of combining reading about and learning about the Easter story with an Easter egg hunt. So you, we're giving you um, some plain paper Easter eggs for you to decorate and colour in. And then you can read through the story and search for each Easter egg as you look for the, for the, uh, for the eggs that you've hidden somewhere. There's some suggestions as where you might like to hide them and what you might like to do with them in the bag. So we're going to try and extend these, uh, these activities over the course of the week. So that could be something you could be doing Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday. And then come Thursday, which for us would be Maundy Thursday, and for you, uh, we've got we've given you um, a recipe for some flatbreads. Now, these sort of flatbreads are the things that uh, when Jesus on Maundy Thursday met with his disciples to have a Passover meal, the bread they would have had would have been a flatbread. In other words, like a, 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 a pizza or a, a wrap. So we've given you a recipe that you might like to make some flatbreads for Maundy Thursday. Then to celebrate Good Friday, not a celebration as such, but a very sad day for the Christian people, um, we've got a template of some crosses for you to make and decorate. So we'd really like you to decorate them and then put them in your window, if you could, just to uh, show everybody that it's Good Friday and it's a, a special day. And then on Easter Saturday, which is a very strange day because as Christians we believe that Jesus died on the cross and then there's this strange day in between Easter Good Friday and uh, Easter Sunday and on Saturday we thought you might like to take the template for a cube which starts off as a cross colour it and decorate it and make it into a story cube we've um, included some suggestions of uh, drawings you might want to include on it, which have got a little reference to each part of the story, palm, washing feet, food, crucifixion on Good Friday and on Easter Sunday. But you don't have to use these if you don't want to, but these will cut out and fit, you can glue them onto the cube if you'd like to. And then a celebration on Easter Sunday, Shirley will have, uh, on her video will have spoken about floating prayers, and these are some prayers we'd like you to try and think about um, doing some drawing or some writing on some paper and folding it up and then floating it but we'd like you really to concentrate on thank you prayers if you can I mean you might have other needs that you want to pray for but it'd be really lovely on Easter Sunday if you could say thank you to God for all the special things that he's given you all the things that are important in your life and all the things that really make you happy so they'd be some really special Easter Sunday thank you prayers I think that's enough from me as I've waffled on for ages. Hope you enjoy your activities and have a really, really happy Easter. God bless. Hello, isn't this a beautiful day that we've chosen to film this? I wanted to talk about prayers. I actually wanted to talk about the things that affect us, the things that we think about. We think about things that worry us and we think about things that make us happy and we think about things in the future and sometimes those things make us anxious and they sit like a little stone inside us making us, dragging us down, making us feel quite heavy and unhappy I wanted to suggest that one of the ways you can get rid of that little stone is to talk to God now when we talk to God, we don't just talk about the things that worry us, 
we talk about the things that make us happy and in some wonderful way God lifts our spirits because of it and to demonstrate that I'm going to put some paper lilies and lily pads on the water so you see they are all closed up and I'm going to put them on and I'll read them dear Lord please make my friend's mum get well I'm worried about the virus Thank you, God, for my teachers. I need help with my work, Lord. Thank you for my friends and family. Do you see how they have all opened, except for this little lily pad, which I guess I just needs a little bit of help. They float on there, There's, they're nowhere to us and we can look at them and think how brilliant they are. And you know, talking about stones remind me about the biggest stone in the world, I think, that is described in the Bible. And what it says is that that stone over the grave for Jesus was rolled away and soon we'll be celebrating Easter Sunday when we find that behind that stone the grave was empty because he rose again. I hope that you find making little prayer flowers helpful to you and God bless you. Let us say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thumbs up too high on that one. Well, that's it, I'm afraid. We've come to the end of our messy Easter at home adventure. I really hope you've had fun and joined in with as many of the activities as you wanted to. Now, I wonder how many of you, whilst watching this video, was eagle-eyed enough to spot when Jackie was talking to us in the beginning and telling us about all the fun activities. Did anyone spot the cross that was next to Jackie? Because on that cross, is a crown of thorns, very much like the crown of thorns that they placed on Jesus' head. If you didn't spot it, maybe you'd like to rewind and have a little look and see if you can spot it. And one other thing, in your bag, you have a little plastic egg. And you might be wondering what to do with that egg. Now, what we thought was, when you're doing your Easter egg hunt or going out and about during Holy Week, you could take that egg with you and when you see things that remind you of the Easter story, you could collect them and pop them in the egg. I would love to find out all of the things you find. You could think of maybe a leaf to remind you of Palm Sunday, maybe a little teeny weeny stone to remind you of the great big boulder. It's really up to you because it's what triggers your memory and makes you remember Jesus and all those incredible things that happened. Now, it's been really lovely to spend time with you. And as always, if you could send us some photos or pictures, either by text message, email, post them onto our Facebook page. We'd really love to see you having fun and getting involved with our Messy Church at Home. And for those of you, if it's your first Messy Church at Home, if you'd like to join in again, just send us an email and we'll pop you onto our mailing list to make sure that when we send out the emails inviting people to take part, 
you'll receive your, informa your invitation to. Now, before we finish, I'd just like to finish with a prayer. So sometimes we like to get ourselves comfortable. Some people like to put their hands together, or maybe in their laps, close their eyes, whatever makes you comfortable. So we just spend some time saying thank you to God. So we say, dear God, thank you that you love us so much that you came to earth as a tiny baby at Christmas as Jesus. Thank you for all the amazing things that Jesus did and said while he was here. And we thank you, Lord, that Jesus died on that cross. But he didn't stay on that cross, Lord. He rose again and he came to life. And we thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit that is with us now and always. We thank you that your love is for each and every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, all that's left for me to say is have an amazing Holy Week and a fantastic Easter, and we hope to see you all soon. God bless. Bye. Ready? It's love, it's love, it's love that makes the world go round. It's love, it's love, it's love that makes the world go round. It's love, it's love. It's love that makes the world go round. God's love makes the world go round. It's you and you and you that makes the love go round. It's you and you and you that makes the love go round. It's you and you and you that makes the love go round. God's love makes the world go round. So pass it on. God's love is free for everyone, so pass it on. God's love is free for everyone, so pass it on. God's love is free for everyone. God's love is for everyone.